Hey everybody, we're back. We're going to talk about the 12 volt system on our spring check portion of that. Um, show you how do we test the converter and the battery. First we're going to unhook the negative lead. Hook our load tester up to the battery. And what we're looking for here is anything over 12 to 7 to 12 to 9. Um, we're going to put this on a load for 10 seconds. We're going to make sure it comes back up into that 12, 8 to 12, 9 range. And this way it shows a good battery. And then we're going to take our voltmeter, make sure it's set to DC. And we're going to check the power coming from the converter to the battery to make sure we're getting proper voltage to charge the battery correctly. And right now, if you see, it's at 13.68, which is a good converter. Yeah, you're good. Hey, we're back. This is uh, our refrigerator check. What we're going to do is we're going to visually inspect the refrigerator and make sure there's no corrosion, uh, no burnt wires. We're going to take our amp meter with it on 110 amps. And we're going to check the amp jaw coming from the heating elements. You want to make sure that they're pulling anywhere from one. 8 to 2.5 which would be a good refrigerator element we're again going to check the 12 volt DC power coming into the control board here to make sure we have adequate 12 volt if anything 13 to 13 8 is good anything below 12 it's not going to work properly um, we'll check to make sure the gas functions properly on here yep. all right we're back with the water heater here now um, what we're going to check here again is for corrosion dirt dirt daubers spiders Spiders like to crawl up inside your burner tube here. They will clog it off and make it not function properly. You'll get a lot of backfire. It could burn stuff up. Um, we're going to pour your anode rod out. Make sure your anode rod's clean, still good. Flush it out at that point. Um, and again, make sure that the gas pressure is right there too, which we can do from the inside. Anything below 10 inches of water column, it will not work correctly. All right, here we are with the holding tanks. I'm going to teach you proper holding tank procedures. Um, anytime you're out camping, you always want to drain your black tank first. And then after you drain your black, then you can drain your gray. That way your gray water cleans out the black water hose, gets all that nasty stuff out of there. Um, after you've drained your black tank, you want to put five to 10 gallons of fresh water back in that tank before you start using it, along with whatever chemical you're going to be using. Here we like to use stuff called BioGreen. It's biodegradable, it's non-toxic. You can actually eat the stuff. It takes a teaspoon of it in the tank and it's good until the next dump. Um, you always want to keep the water in the tank. Don't ever keep the black tank valve open while you're camping. All the solid waste will stick to the tank and then you'll end up getting clogs down the road. Either have to replace the tank at that point or do major flushing, which can cost a pretty penny. All right, so we're back. We're gonna talk a little bit about sealants on the outside of the units, which are very, very, very major components. Um, you always want to check every 30 days, make sure all of your sealants around, all of your fixtures are void free. If there is a void, go ahead and take care of that, especially on new units. New units only have a 90 day warranty on leaks from the outside. After that 90 days, it's, you're up, it's on you at that point. They consider that maintenance issues. Um, so you want to go and check everything, make sure there's nothing gapped open. Uh, your four biggest points. Four biggest issues are your front and rear corners, especially at the top of the roof line. You want to make sure those are definitely void free. Those are the major, major, major leaks of all RVs. All right, we're back with our air conditioners. Um, first, we're going to check to make sure your filters are clean. If they're not, we will clean them. They need to be replaced and replace them. They're cheap enough. Um, and then we'll go into checking for amp draw to make sure you're getting the proper amperage from the air conditioner. You want to see anything over, depending on the temperature outside, anything over 10 and a half to 14 would be a good air conditioner, depending on the outside temperature. Right now we're probably sitting at about 75, and we're pulling 10.24, which is pretty good. Um, we would also check the air temperature split between the intake and the discharge. We want to see about a 20 degree split there. Anything less than that is iffy. Um, Depending on the manufacturer of the AC, some of them say 10 degrees, some of them say 20, so kind of varies. 
Um, we'll also check to make sure your coils are clean. If they're dirty enough that need to be cleaned, we'll call you with an estimate. It's usually about an hour and a half to clean the coils. Um, that's basically it on air conditioners. All right, here we are at the gas system. We're going to check the propane uh, pressure, make sure there's no leaks anything, in anything. We want to see a lockout pressure of anywhere from 14 to 15 inches of water column. And then we will do what we call a drop test. We'll drop the pressure down to 8 inches of water column and let that sit for 3 minutes to check for any kind of leaks. Um, once that, if that stays at 8 inches of water column for that 3 minutes, we're good. If it starts to drop, we will then go to each appliance with a approved leak detecting solution and spray each fitting to make sure there's no to, to find the leak. And then we will fix it at that point, and that's it.